Hello, I'm Firas, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, uh, dimensioning in Revit. I've been asked uh, to uh, to show some uh, extra detail, uh, extra information about uh, how we can add uh, dimension. And uh, it's we really, it's really a good chance to continue with the previous uh, midterm example uh, that we have uh, done three videos so far on it. So I'm going to continue a fourth one. Uh, to show you how to do uh, uh, a very basic uh, 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 dimensioning to it. So if I if I go to level one, and you can see that uh, I've been I've been adding here. Or I added actually a couple of uh, dimension. I'm gonna take them out, and if I refer just to the to the PowerPoint of the question that I show you before, uh, it's uh, as you can see here. It's uh, a couple of uh, axes here, or a couple of layers of dimension. So this one for the center line, and this one is for the general detail and overall dimension also we need. So if we go for three strings of dimension, that will be good. So back to, uh, back to Rivet, uh, actually. Uh, let's go to Annotate, and I'm going to go with Aligned. So the easiest... Uh, the easiest way, so or the easiest one is this one. Uh, just a couple of click continuously, and then you can go click outside, and it's gonna basically create a start point and end point based on each click object, and that's for the center line as you can see. And now, if I go back again to align and just pay more attention to whatever we have here in the option bar. Uh, we can see that uh, it it's actually dealing with the uh, with the individual referencing. So whatever you click as an individual, going to be a start point, and that the other one or the other individual, it, it's it's dealing with it as an as an ending point. So if I want to do this, and uh, again, uh, it's going to immediately go to the strongest reference plane, and that's the wall center line of even a wall core. So I need to hover above and have a couple of click on tabs. So until I start up by the end of that wall, and then here, and then another click here, and you see it's again it's an individual referencing, and again it's uh, not really recognizing the end. So another click on tab, and then I can just uh, click away. So that's it, and it might require a couple of. Uh, clicks and tabs. I'm going to delete that. And uh, the best way to do that quickly is to go to a line. And instead of having an individual referencing, you go up entire wall. And now in the options, you go to opening and you want to consider the opening as width, not from the center line. So when you click that, see, it recognizes the entire wall with its opening. And that's lovely, as you can see. And let's go in the options and we go center line. Let me show you this one. So it recognized from the beginning of the wall, actually from the center of it to the center of the the opening and then to the center of that. So I'm gonna go one one step undo and then probably you might notice that uh, it's selecting automatically the center. So not a big deal. You just you just click those mid ball here. And hover again to the end. Probably you might need to use a tab sometimes uh, if it's not recognizing it. And then you can just, uh, I don't know, just push it above. And look, it's uh, even locking itself away uh, in a specific distance from the previous one. And then I can just click the balls, the ball here, and, and push that up uh, like that. Those balls here represent uh, the end lines of those dimensions. So again, uh, the final step here in the align, I can just select the entire wall, but before, let goes and cancel the opening and hit OK. And now I can make, you know, like the, the entire length of the wall, but again, this one to be pushed with tab to the end, and then this one, the ball here to be retained back. Same thing, the mid one here, the mid ball here, and then here, and then push the end one back, you know. So you get this nice uh, three strings of uh, dimensioning. Uh, 
and each one uh, represent uh, something usually we give this for the overall and then the center line and then the detail one uh, the internal one I would rather go with probably uh, an individual referencing and you can go ahead and you know bother yourself with lots of tabs so you can get the best out of that and as you can see and you click out the finish uh, if you don't like the size of this again uh, just change it uh, here and gonna go bigger or it goes smaller it depends on what you want and what's the specification that of the dimension or the printing layout that you're gonna use later on so that's uh, that's the basic uh, annotation uh, a line which is the most common one uh, the other group here of the, uh, of the dimensioning you can also go ahead and uh, just with a detail line just I'm gonna draw uh, a quick uh, shapes probably we need an angle and uh, probably also we need uh, some circle probably or uh, let's go with the uh, arc here all right now the linear one uh, again uh, it's uh, you might notice that it doesn't have the same options and it's can when you zoom into the object it recognize the point of its start and then the point of its end so it's basically it allow you to struggle or to drag down uh, that uh, to the horizontal projection of it or to the vertical projection of that and uh, that's not the real length of this uh, it's just the projection in the Y or the projection in the X and in order to distinguish that from the aligned and uh, it's also I'm gonna hover above the tab and start from this point and hover above the tab see that's the actual uh, length of that and it's aligned with the angle of this object and uh, that's the basic difference between you know the linear one and the aligned one angular it's just you need two lines and it's going to define the angle between them uh, that's I think straightforward uh, easy to be understood radial same you know it's going to give you a radius the other one is diameter so it's going to give you the twice as that and it's going to give you the whole length of the uh, two radiuses on one dimension on one diameter of the, the circle arc length you know you need to select that object and then you're going to go to the start point of it and end point of it and it's going to give you the actual real length of that uh, arc and if you have an elliptical or two center uh, curve probably you not get this working so be careful with it uh, it's also allow you even to draw I think it can help you to select this and then measure part of it like this which is also good so you can know now how much it's from this point to this point so those are the basic annotation that we have and if you go to the here a small drop down uh, it allows you to change the properties of the, the dimension as types overall so for the linear for example uh, let's go linear dimension type and let me close it so we're talking about those guys so again uh, I can just easily leaving this for you so again straightforward the dimension the text the, the size and uh, I'm just gonna go to color it's easier to be you know understood I'm just gonna change it to red and you see just those anything linear is actually changed uh, whether it's uh, aligned or whether it's a uh, linear one so if anyone straight it's actually changed you can go ahead and pick the angular and I'm gonna change that to blue and see only the blue has been changing and you know the rest like the radial one it's also the same so I can change the color into anything else and uh, it's gonna apply only for that uh, for that type specifically while those two red and those blue uh, that's it for the for the basic uh, basic dimension and if you noticed uh, here 
and that we need also might to consider some elevation work and it's it's uh, it's again uh, very easy and very very important at the same time to organize the way you show the grids and the levels and to, to add dimension uh, into them or to them sorry for the levels for example uh, a little bit annoying before you go to the, the elevation uh, you might need here the spot elevation and you have to zoom in and you're going to see this and you have to click three times so one to add it and then two and three if you want it like that otherwise if you click so three times without moving that's what i forgot to tell and if you want to click and then move your hand you're going to see this uh, i think it's kind of ugly at all and then you have to decide which side you want so maybe that way Probably it's good if you want to you wanna do that on a wall, so you just say I'm putting it in here and then, you know, like that point is that high. Anyway, uh, that's the height of it. Usually, most of the people that I, and most of my students suffer with this command because they, when you go to the wall, you see it. And when you go to the horizontal level, like a corridor or like a, a slab, it doesn't show. That, that's because you didn't model it, you know, like you need a horizontal slab or a ramp or whatever a roof so it actually can sense what you did otherwise it's gonna just measure the top of those walls when you see them in the plan so if you don't see this uh, level indicator uh, whatever here, spot elevation, whatever, whatever I ever decided to call it remember that you didn't create the surface itself and you need to actually create a floor or a ramp or whatever, or roof if I go to East Elevation, for example, uh, uh, probably you might notice some of the overlapping. I think in, we, we fixed this in the previous, so just uh, drag that up and down to avoid it, and then go to, again, Linear Individual, and then add, you know, the dimensioning that we was talking about, and the same thing you can add in here, or to the architectural element themselves, to the slabs and and so on, so it's really uh, it's really good and it's a uh, part of you know like uh, having a good detailed uh, work for your building. And again, the use of tab, uh, sorry, the use of tab is actually uh, applicable here. So you can you know uh, hover between the center line and the and the edge of the wall. Same thing to be added to the window or to the levels of the ramp. And it's really very basic and very easy, but yet it adds lots of uh, lots of uh, detailing and uh, uh, a better quality work for your documentation to add some uh, dimension in both plans and uh, elevations. I wish that you find that uh, video useful. Thank you very much, and have a good day.